Welcome to Adventure Freaks, a podcast on living abroad on a budget. Well, Paul Damon, thank you so much for um, joining the podcast today. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Hey, thanks for the invite. We finally connected. Yeah, man. I'm glad you're feeling yeah. better. Woo. But thanks, uh, thanks. yeah, Paul Damon, he lives in Nicaragua, in Granada, Nicaragua. And Paul is originally from Holland, and he's, he's traveled around quite a bit throughout the world. He's going to share some of that with us. He, he was a professor at one point in his career. He's, he's a, involved in real estate, and he's on the NAR faculty in Nicaragua for real estate. So he's going to help us better understand what, uh, you know, what the real estate market is like down there, what's affordable, what isn't, you know, and he's going to give his perspective in living in um, Nicaragua. So, Paul, my my first question to you is, you know, you're you're a guy who's who's traveled around. You're from Holland, which is just a beautiful, beautiful part of the world. Um, how did you end up in Central America in, in Nicaragua? Well, I mean, uh, we could have a long, long story, but I, I don't think that is the purpose. Uh, so the way to look at it, uh, when uh, I was two years old, my parents uh, basically decided to leave for many reasons to leave the Netherlands. Uh, and we ended up in Venezuela and then we went to different countries for quite a few years. So I was raised in, in the Latin American culture. And, um, uh, yeah, that was one of the main reasons why I have traveled to 57 countries. I've uh, worked in a lot of different countries. I've lived in 12 and, you know, been in Asia, I've been to China, I've been to the Middle East, Eastern Europe, you name it. I've been Northern Africa. I mean, are there still some countries I want to see? Yeah. Like everybody else, you know, we, when you get that bug, we all go, God, I wish I could do this one more time or see this thing. <laughs> That's true. Uh, but coming back to your original question, why did we end up in Nicaragua? <clears throat> well, I came here in early 82, and that is when the regime changes occurred. <clears throat> and I came here for work. I actually came here for work. Uh, I was working for a seed company. <clears throat> that was selling seed technology, hybrid seed, as they call it. And I came here and spent some time here. And I told myself, I effing never will come back here. I just didn't like it. I didn't hey, like the hey, people. Paul, I didn't like. Yeah. You said you said seed technology or. Yeah. Seed technology. You know, it's uh, seed technology. It's seed and it's uh, you have what they call open pollinated or hybrid. A hybrid is a, a crossing. And that seed, for example, if you go to a, a store and you buy seed, let's say a Home Depot, those are hybrid seeds. Oh, okay. So seed <clears throat> that you plant. <clears throat> seed that you plant. Right, right. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, okay. yeah. And, and not seeds for children. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, let's, you know, I had to throw that in there. Uh, so... <clears throat> uh, so I, I left and uh, kept on doing my work, you know, et cetera. And then in 2014, 15, I was uh, asked by a friend of mine in Wichita. Uh, he was having some problems here in Nicaragua with his uh, uh, tobacco growing business. And he says, hey, can you help me? So, yeah, it should be fine. Uh, you know, pay the bill. Let's go. I have I go there. And I tell you, uh, right off the bat, coming out of the airport, uh, that that humidity, that that different vibe, the, 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 the hustle and the bustle, the noises, you name it. I mean, all that stuff, the smells, the food, you know, it just came like a rush. I mean, it was like, wow, shit, what's going on here? <laughs> and uh, so we took the, the, the car, we drove uh, three hours way up north. It's called Esteli, which is the, the tobacco growing region of uh, Nicaragua. And... <clears throat> That week, I was on, it almost felt like on uh, steroids, on, 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 yes, on a high, um, you know, smoking cigars. And I'm not a cigar smoker, but, you know, I would smoke five, six cigars. I would have 
four, five, six coffees in the morning and we were doing uh, rum and, and I'm not even a rum drinker and having steaks. I mean, I ate and I drank and it was like, oh my God. And just walking through the town, I, I was telling to my friend Nabil, I said, Nabil, that is the apartment I want. He says, you're nuts. I said, nope, that's the apartment I want. And um, I came back and I was talking to my girlfriend. I said, you know what? What are we doing here in Kansas City? What are we doing on a day-to-day, busting our chops? And do we really feel like we're getting ahead? Do we feel like we're making a difference? Yeah, we sell this, we do this, we go see family. You know, we're, we're doing all that stuff we're doing in that hustle and bustle that we all fall into, you know, on a daily yeah. grind. Yeah. But we never sit down and say, wow, you know, and like this morning, uh, I made coffee. I made some bread rolls with some cheese and I took it out to the deck upstairs and I said, where, where do you want to be today? She goes, where else? Right here. You know, I mean, the, the sense of just being free, open, you know, I got four acres, right? It's not a lot. But if you consider that, if you were living in a, uh, in a small, let's say, home in in kansas or in an apartment and now you ha- and now with COVID and everything else you want space so that's what we found here is space we found culture we found community you know i'm not going to say that ever i know everybody here but you know when i go like yesterday i had to go to the store and you you start to learn how people move around in the store it's a uh, very tight right People had masks on, but it's very tight. And everybody's maneuvering to uh, to get to the front of the line. And, you know, I'm one of those guys that goes, okay, I know the game. So I, I always stand by somebody. I watch body language, and then I sneak in, and I then I'm in front. And it just, you know, I, I watch, and I watch how they watch me. And they go, look at that gringo. He knows how we do it, you know. Yeah. And to me, it's it's fun. It's just uh, it's uh, a whole new lifestyle that in in the in back home i don't think i could have that anymore i don't even want to go back home i mean even if somebody says hey we'll give you x amount we'll give you that that's not what it's not the money it is the the abundance of openness and you know we're going to go on a day trip today to meet with some friends and go have pizza on their farm and it's it's a whole different vibe totally yeah yeah Wow, that sounds amazing, man. It just sounds like you just found a, you know, a way to just truly live differently. And there's so many people stuck, you know, especially yeah. here in, in America. And, they, and, and they're completely overworked, stressed out, and they can't see any way out of it, you know? I mean, it's just, it, it's like how, how many people die of stress-related illness each year? I mean, it's crazy. And you just said enough is enough and decided you were going to do something differently and it sounds like you found but it sounds also too like you were able to um find work you know down in latin america and in in central america and that's really challenging to do from what i've heard it's challenging but it is looking at your uh your value your your value proposition who you are what you know what can you provide you know i mean i I hear a lot of people they go oh i want to be i i like yoga so i'm going to be a yoga instructor we've got an overabundance of yoga uh i'm going to open a restaurant Uh, not enough money to be made uh you know oh i could do nail salon okay there's only so many nails one can do so, but there are opportunities. I mean, if you look at, you know, do you enjoy, for example, uh, there's a lady in our community. Uh, uh, her name is Amy Bushnell. And what she uh, loves is to paint. And so she set up an art studio and she teaches both adults as kids how to paint, which I think is fabulous. Mm-hmm. Is she making money? Oh, you know that's a definition that i think we all are uh have learned uh from our parents you know are you making money are you happy can you can you exist what you are making and are you happy in a day-to-day 
I mean, if you're not happy, bail out. I mean, that's what we did. We bailed out and we left because we were not happy. We were stressed to the point that I had a stroke. Uh, We were stressed to the point that we were saying, you know, look at these bills. Look at how expensive it is just to live in an apartment. You know, we lived at the very end. We were living in an apartment and it was $1,200 and you had nothing. You were on top of each other. You're aggravated. So when we came here, you know, living on four acres, uh, large home. We bought a large home. It was the wrong reason because we thought the kids were to show up. But that's, again, uh, nothing there. But what I'm saying is, is that you, it all becomes in the head, right? I, I and my wife, we both speak fluent Spanish. That helps. But we could have gone easily to Asia. I mean, I've uh, been, spent a lot of time in Asia. We could have gone to Eastern Europe. Uh, but there was something here that caught our eye. <clears throat> and what caught our eye was very simple. Location. Close mm-hmm. to the U.S. We have yeah, kids. Yeah. You know? Uh, and we, every, we're human beings. We're emotional. We want to see our kids once in a while. Right? So we want to be close. We wanted to be able to do an activity, which is real estate, and do that in a market that was still in its early stages of development, where we could have be an impactful player, okay? And then we wanted to find a place that we could call home, a community, a somewhere where we didn't feel outcast, but we didn't feel like, you know, you, for example, if you go in Central America, people will say, I want to live, for example, I want to go in Tamarindo, Costa Rica. I want to go San Juan del Sur, Nicaragua. I want to go here. And what it is, it's enclaves of expats. Yeah. You know what? Sorry. That's not what I want. I want it. We want it to live with the community. That is how you develop these relationships these and get to know what's going on and, uh, and get the sense of culture, get, gets a sense of their lifestyle. Uh, and, and, you know, we, we, we grow a lot of uh, food and fruits and that's for staff. People go, why don't you sell it? Why should I sell it? If I have staff that can take a little bit home, sell a little bit, who can, it's not coming off my back. It's coming off my trees, you know, mm-hmm. and the sun and stuff like that. Uh, it's, trying to be goody goody two shoes but we're what we're trying to do is be part of a community where we're we're not protector per se by others that speak the same language that came from the same culture that came from the same income sphere you know we we like that hustle and bustle um of the differences i don't know how else to explain it yeah no i i I'm the same way. I, I'm the, exactly the same way, Paul. You and I could hang because I just love to live among the people whenever I go to a, a country. And a lot of times I travel alone because I don't want any external, you know, influence from where I'm from, like a friend. As soon as they start talking to me in English, they're pulling me back into what I'm trying to right. remove Avoid. myself yeah. from. And I want to yeah, immerse yeah, myself yeah. fully into that world and that culture and you know, the food, the language and learn as much as I can and, and meet with the, the locals and find out where the really interesting local places are to go and see, you know, and right. you, only, you can only do that when you when you stick around for a while and you start, you know, um, becoming friends with some of the local people there. So, I, yeah, I completely agree. So for those for the people that would consider, um, you know, looking at Nicaragua, I mean, in a simpler life and a more affordable option, a, a way to live differently. I mean, what, what would they need? I, what, what do you, how do you, how do you live in Nicaragua? First of all, because a lot of these countries, you got to have a certain income that you have to show. Um, and then um, how much does it cost? I mean, can, to, to live per month in parts of Nicaragua, I, I hear it's extraordinarily cheap, but um, I know from city to city it varies. Granada is quite a, quite the popular area that you live in. Right, right. So uh, first of all, we live outside of town. So I live in a truly a farm community of what I call as a bedroom community of uh, 
professionals that go to Masaya, Managua, Granada to work during the day. And I'm looking right out the window here from the living room and it's all farms all around me. I mean, there's a, a few houses, but nothing of significance, right? So coming to your question is, let's look at it this way. I do. We were talking about, I asked about like moving. What would people need to move right. over, come over okay. and right. affordability? So, uh, so what we did, which is very different than a lot of people, we spent a few months just running around, just looking at different places, right? And we then uh, kind of decided to say, okay, what is it that you want? I mean, what, how do we want to live? Where do we want to live? Well, we didn't want to live in the city that we work. Uh, we actually live outside of Granada, half an hour, in, like I said, in the farm community. And <clears throat> so that was one. And we found space. That's what we want. We wanted space. We wanted to have a dog. We ended up with six, but we wanted to have a dog. Uh, we wanted to have fruit trees. We wanted to have gardens. So we looked at all that. So then the decision is, what are you going to do, own or, or rent? Well, uh, since I'm in real estate, uh, we uh, certainly believe in, in ownership, uh, which we think is a lot better. I could have rented this uh, going back five years. I could have rented and probably paid 800 to 1000 a month for rent which is quite a bit when you start adding it up, right? That's 60,000 in five years. So we bought it for cash, paid cash. There is really no uh, mortgaging here. There are, but it's just most expats don't do it. And uh, so if you take then my month to month housing out, you know, no, no mortgage, no nothing, right? And just living. So living is paying for the dogs, uh, dog food to help the caretaker that cost me anywhere from 10 to 12 dollars a day for a caretaker for the cleaning lady costs around nine to ten dollars uh, a day um you know uh food it's costing me around 250 a month uh i of course have a car because i'm in real estate and that's costing me anywhere from 60 to 70 dollars a month in gasoline if i didn't have it this business i wouldn't be doing this right yeah so my total monthly uh, not including my apartment rental that i have in san juan del sur i have another property that i rent because i do business there just looking at my living as a person that lives in this country uh husband and wife we are spending on average 12 to 1400 dollars a month 1200 to 1400 a month well, Paul, I need to pay rent. How much would that be? Well, it depends. W what, what is the lifestyle? You know, I always ask people, what is the lifestyle read that you're looking for? Mm -hmm. Well, I want a pool. I want this or that. Well, you're talking then five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, can I get cheaper? Yes. I can live a lot lower cost. But again, uh, I have a lot of things that I need to do my business. So it kind of falls into that. You know, I have six dogs. I could have lived with one dog, you know, six dogs is costing me $60 a week in food. Okay. Yeah. Six dogs. Right. Um, I, I don't need a, a caretaker if I didn't have this much land, but I need it. I am not going to do it. I'm not going to do that heavy lifting. Uh, no, not me. That's not uh, me. So, you know, th those are the type of adjustments, you know, uh, I have a car, but if I took the car out, that would save me easily three, $400 a month, you know, mm -hmm. car maintenance, uh, fuel, uh, all that stuff is adding three, $400 a month. So you got to figure out, if you say, you know, I want a better lifestyle or a more relaxed, more economical, more lifestyle that allows me to go back to living, uh, you got to ask yourself, how are you going to support yourself? Here in, in Nicaragua, you can easily support yourself. I, I know friends that are living on six to 800 a, a month, but you know, they, they, they love to eat bread and crackers. I don't, I like a good yeah. steak. I is like, that, you know. Is that including their, their um, apartment, their rent? No, no, that's no. excluding, that's excluding their rent. And like I said, a lot of them own, uh, but 
of late, I would say of late, uh, of um, the new entrants that have come from Canada and the US, from uh, they're all renting, and on most of them are renting in the six hundred to a thousand dollars a month. Okay, our rental market is very very tight. What that does that mean? Well, prices ha are going up slowly, and you cannot find the type of property that you could have found if you had looked at it a year ago, a year and a mm -hmm. half ago. So it's a very tight uh, market. Okay. Now, as far as like, um, the, you know, what are the, the visa requirements or the cost to, to live in um, Nicaragua? It's all over. So you could uh, get a investor visa which uh, in uh, like Costa Rica, I believe right now it's 200 or 250. Portugal is uh, half a million. Uh, here, you can do it for uh, 35 to $50,000. Invest in real estate. Mm -hmm. uh, is it easy to uh, become an investor here? Yes, it, it's fairly easy. It's as easy as if you go to the US and try to invest. I mean, that's the way I look at it. I'm in the business, so... To me, it is uh, fairly easy. So that's one. Um, you can do retiree. So I'm actually a retiree in Nicaragua. Why did I do that? I wanted to see how would, it would work. You know, how does that system work? So, uh, but my wife is actually a investor. So she can actually, she is allowed to work in that sense of the word, right? And there are uh, ways around uh, the no work requirement. I mean, there's uh, there, are, there are many ways of doing things that you can do. You can own a company, and by owning the company, you can actually work, right? Mm -hmm. So, but again, for, for me as somebody that advises people, the way to advise is doing it and then be able to say, you know, based on my experience, when I did it, I did this, 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 and this is what's going to take. Mm -hmm. So... You can literally here on a let's say a thousand to twelve hundred a, uh, a month. You can retire here. You get incentives from the government as a retiree. The re, uh, incentives are uh, some tax holiday for for you to build a home, for example, and you get tax holiday, meaning you don't pay sales tax on that. You yeah. can bring your furniture in tax free. And there's you can buy a car tax free, but all these things ha are changing. It's uh, so I cannot be specific because things are changing because of this environment of uh, you know not enough uh, money in the tax coffers. So I you know when I applied, it was supposedly fifty thousand um, uh, free taxes on construction, which ended up being around fifteen thousand dollars. Uh, you can bring a car in tax free up to twenty five thousand dollar tax value cannot be older than 10 year old car mm. uh, and then you could bring some of your furniture in tax free so um i did it just to do uh to find out how it would work i actually did not buy a car i bought a car but not on a tax-free basis I have not brought my furniture in because uh, right now I'm not in ready for that part of the plan. So the kids use the furniture. Yeah, yeah. Did you say that, that retirees can live anywhere from a thousand to twelve hundred a month? Yes, I, I did say that. And that's pretty that's pretty comfortable living over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are there yeah. any, Paul? Are there any like towns that are close to the beach? A lot of people have you know, the, the, the dream of living close to a beach town um, where they can walk to the beach, walk to the pub, walk to the restaurant. What? Yeah, there are. There are many. I yeah. mean, you, uh, you just go south from uh, Granada. It's uh, basically the San Juan del Sur area, Tola, Rivas. Uh, uh, you can go to Pocho Mil Viejo, Pocho Mil. Uh, Popoyo, all that. There's a whole band of beach towns, and it's a variety from, you know, uh, backpackers, uh, uh, you know, very hippie area, uh, surf. Uh, so it all depends what you're looking for. Are you looking for that type of a community, or are you looking 
every lifestyle you can find here the difference of lifestyle right sure sure yeah as far as like those those communities i mean can what can you what can you purchase a flat for like a, a an apartment or a condo for you know where okay. you're not necessarily on the beach but you are in a neighborhood where you could walk to the beach you could walk to the pub you could walk there is really not that much walking as you, you were talking about walking to the pub, right? Yeah. You, you could live in town, but uh, I would say 80, 90% of the people that uh, have gravitated to those areas don't live in town, okay? If they live in town, it's because they work, they have a business, et cetera, gotcha. or they live on the hills, right? But um, so we have sold several houses in one area, which is... Uh, uh two three kilometers so let's say two miles from the center of town and uh these homes uh two bedroom two bathroom uh small home um that was for forty thousand dollars another one was a little bit larger also two bedroom two bathroom eighty thousand uh, dollars i mean th these are all economical uh, pro properties but most people, when I hear people say, oh, I want to be near water, you know, they're looking for these low cost homes, uh, say like what I just said, and they want to be near water. It's going to be hard to find what we would call Western type style home mm -hmm. um, with the amenities that you're looking for um, in that area. Can you find? Yeah, I mean, uh, I have a property right now on the market. It's uh, 90,000 on uh, five acres, $90,000. And, and it's not a perfect home, but if you put some elbow grease, as we say, you know, elbow grease, clean it up, do some remodeling, you would have a fantastic property, but you won't have a beach nearby. Yeah, yeah. You would have one heck of a butt kicking property. Yeah. So uh, what I, where I'm kind of saying is, you can find the diamond in the rough. You can find that property uh, with space. You know, everybody, I think everybody nowadays in their heads are going, I want more space. Well, if you want more space, but near the beach is kind of hard to do because the nearer to the beach, the more land, the, the value goes up, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're uh, near the water. So, and then if you want to start growing uh, fruits and veggies, uh, being near the beach, it's not good soil for that. You yeah. know, you're going to have to have tillable land that has very productive soil, like what I have. And I have rains, I mean, daily rains to, that give me the water for all my fruits and vegetables. So you got to compensate. And, you know, I can go to the beach. Uh, if I get in the car, I can be... Uh, at the beach at 10 30 it's right now nine o'clock so in an hour and a half i'll be on the beach having my margarita if that's what i want right mm -hmm. and uh so for me for my lifestyle it's perfect because i i want space i want everything else that the beach does not provide me but sure. there's going to be others that don't like my lifestyle so each to his own yeah yeah how was healthcare in um, nicaragua excellent so let me, uh, as before we went live, I told you I, <clears throat> I contracted COVID. So I'm not going to talk about, you know, the, the yes or the no and the, the ifs and the buts, who cares? But I contracted. So I uh, and my wife, we were vaccinated. And uh, I did it because of precondition. And, and again, I don't want to talk about you should, you should not, you know, that's, I, that's not my 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 billy wig right now so i contracted and the first thing we did we called the doctor and the doctor uh drew blood uh, i did not do the swap because the swap says yes or no the blood says what you got so we did a blood test um the doctor coming here and, the, and he came to the house just remember that and it was in uh, on a Saturday or Sunday, how time flies, I can't remember. Saturday or Sunday, he showed up. Uh, so weekend, he had called us on the phone via WhatsApp, you know, the app. And I'm, I'm coming over. Are you guys ready? Yeah, we're ready. And uh, next day, we got the results. Uh, that was $120 plus or minus. 
and yes, you've got COVID. Okay. So then um, uh, my internist, he told me to call a, um, a nurse. So the nurse came and put an intravenous uh, a needle and we started doing drip, uh, a whole bunch of antibacteria, whatever. And uh, uh, medicine after medicine after medicine. And, uh, you know, with all the meds, uh, so the the medical care by the professionals, I think I spent with the test a little bit over 250. And if I, for example, this was one of the meds I was taking every day, uh, two of these, uh, that was, uh, let me see, that's $16. Okay. This mm -hmm. is the anti uh, bacteria uh, uh, that you inject to yourself with saline, 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 saline. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, and so, you know, we did that for basically uh, 12 days and had all the meds and phone calls, you name it. I feel a lot better. Uh, I, I know I'm in recovery. Like I told you, I'm still very tired. Uh, we hey, you look excited. great, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. So that is on the COVID side. So let me talk about my wife. She had plastic surgery. And uh, in the U.S., it would have cost her $20,000. Here, she did it with a, uh, a plastic surgeon in a public hospital, but in the private wing with a private nurse, 24 hours in a large room, you know, beautiful. I mean, you walk in a hospital, you go, uh, very dreadful. You know, the colors are very blah. But, you know, I'm not going to the hospital for upbeat, white and stuff like that uh, i'm going for the care mm -hmm. and the care is just fantastic it's just you know the doctor for the follow-up he was with uh, my wife for six months on whatsapp you know uh, mm -hmm. she could daily say you know i have a pain i got this or i got that hey boom 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 uh, my brother-in-law got on a motorcycle uh, uh accident or fall i should say and cut, cut two tendons Took him to the emergency center right up the street here. They sewed him up and then we took him to a public hospital where they sewed back the tendons, etc. Cost wise was zero. Now, I do believe uh, that when we get a zero bill, we always give money to staff and, and pay for uh, the syringes and stuff like that. Now, are they replenishing? I don't know, but at least I feel good that I'm not taking away from uh, the low income people, right? Because I yeah. went through emergency, et cetera. Why was it zero? Because I live in the community. So your brother and your brother in law didn't have to pay anything. No, no help. We live in the we live in the community. Wow. That's a that's terrific, man. Well, it's terrific. I mean, I don't go, uh, I, 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 I'm always careful the way I put it because the way I, I'm not looking for free care, right? Sure. I, I can afford my care. Uh, others cannot. So, so we, you, that's why I said, you know, when, when we got done with the treatment, I took the doctor aside, you know, I want to thank you. First of all, can I offer you all staff and you a meal? Because I know you guys are working, you never really get, you know, so we, we, we got them a meal, et cetera. And then I said, you know, what, what was the cost of these things? And he goes, no, no, that's okay. I said, well, but if you can replenish it, it makes me feel better that you can sure. help others. So to me, that's important. So this is one of the things, maybe I'm, maybe it's my old age. I don't know. But it's the same thing that we do when we go to the elder care centers. There's a few here around us where we bring fruits and vegetables and diapers and, and stuff and money to, uh, to help along those that don't. I mean, you know, that's the nice thing about having the benefit of living in a country that gives you so much where you can give back and nobody's really forcing you doing it because you want to do it you yeah I, I, mean? I think that's oh yeah i think it's great i think that's awesome i think that there's a lot of people that that uh, i i mentioned this on another podcast a while ago but there's a lot of uh 
expats and especially you know retirees and people that head down to to different destinations and they have these expectations um that they just you know that the country just can't live up to and so they become frustrated because they expect you know the u.s amenities and and it's just not that and they let it go but you're just yeah. because i think you're you're just you're a you you're a very unique guy you've been around and you've been to various countries and you're and I think it, that's the way you're living among the people and you're very thoughtful about it. And and that's important, I think, when you choose to go live in a different country is to be thoughtful and considerate of the culture and want to be a part of that and learn about right. the culture. Yeah. And that's that's exactly what you chose to do. Some people yeah. don't do that, though. Yeah. They well, come down and they, they, they complain about how slow things are, how things right. operate or the differences. Right. And they're still yeah. living. Right. Yeah. Or corrupt. And I'm like going, you know what? America's corrupt too. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so we if you don't know, even have to talk. Right. We don't yeah. even want to go there, but it's like, yeah. that, that, there's a lot of people that, you know, and now that I'm doing this, this type of podcast, I'm talking with many people that are not happy with the destinations they chose to live in and they complain and and i'm like thinking to myself well why are you still there it, right, and if it's right, not lit right, if it if, right. if you're not fulfilled there why did you leave you know your country of origin and um well, so but, there but are those people uh, right i would add the following when we came here we uh, of course like everybody else we brought suitcases of this and this and this and this you know stuff that we needed you know, we love to cook, so we had to have our knife set. Uh, darn it, <laughs> you cannot tell me not to bring my knife set, right? Uh, so, you know, we, we everybody brings those unique things that they need in their mind because it's the mind that has conditioned us. But one thing that when I taught international um, is, you know, we're sponges. And that sponge uh, inflicts us in our ability to value things so when we let literally left we said you know we're leaving we'll come back uh but we're leaving let's just appreciate what we're going to find let's go out let's just venture let's just take a walk around the block let's go to this restaurant it might be a dive it might not and i mean we have gone to places to eat that looks like a a dive and then you go holy shit that was a good uh, uh pork you know, or that was good fish, or we were down going down the street one day <clears throat> several months ago, and I stopped this lady that I see walking out of this big villa, Victorian villa, three story. I mean, Victorian, and I'm talking Victorian, right? Mm -hmm. And I stopped her. And I said, uh, "Sorry, ma'am, uh, can you tell me where I can stop and eat? I'm starved." And I looked at my wife, and she's a fish person. I'm not, but I. Where can we eat? And she goes. Well, I'll be right back. She goes, just drive right in there. I'll be right back. I'm going, I look at her and I go, what? She says, okay, let's go. So we went in there and she goes, welcome to our restaurant. Uh, it's closed today, but I just brought some fish. And she says, here's the fresh fish. I'm going to make your meal. Go, go upstairs and uh, relax. And if you want a drink, I'll bring you a drink. And we looked at each other and going, what the hell did it just happen? But it's that that's what I want. I want to be able to kind of knock on the door and say, you know, I'm hungry. Do you have something? Can yeah, you yeah. share your plate? <laughs> and we ate. I mean, it was delicious. And I think we ended up spending, it's irrelevant what it was, yeah. but it was delicious. And then the lady of the house owner came and then I interviewed her and we talked for half an hour. And then, uh, a month ago, a gentleman calls me and says, Paul, I met so-and-so that you did the video. Oh, my God. I told the lady I was coming, but I was stuck in Costa Rica. She came to the border. She picked me up. She took me to her house. I stayed there for, uh, she goes, what a find. And it, it is that type of things that those beautiful diamonds that are in the rough, if that's what you want to call that come mm -hmm. out and shine and make you go, wow, I'm so happy to live where I'm at. Yeah, yeah. With no preconceived mo mo notion, right? Ask, hey, you know, where can I get a good tortilla? I'll go down the street. 
You know, I found a bread person. Uh, one day I was walking down the street and I'm going, God, that smells good. Oh my God, fresh bread. So I asked, and it's this little old lady, which I love, you know, this makes you kind of think about your grandmother, right? And in the back, all these guys are working and she's just kind of with the whip. Come on guys, work, work, work. And she goes, what do you want? I said, oh, that bread, that sweet bread. Oh man, and nice and warm. She goes, you want coffee with it? I go, you got some honey. <laughs> yes, I'll get the coffee. <laughs> right. But you know, it is just like, you know, they, they, you don't really have to ask a lot, but if you just kind of say, hey, oh wow, what a great smell, oh wow, this, you know, they bring you a drink. It, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's yeah, that's why we're here, you know. It's, that's, yeah, that's, that's yeah. so nice. The, what, what, are, um, what are the costs if you go out to a restaurant and you eat at like at a typical, um, rest, restaurant, typical food in Nicaragua? What are you going to pay for a meal and a, and a drink or a beer? Okay, a beer, I, to me, the beer, if it's more than a dollar and a half, then I'm going, wait a second, what's going on here? Okay, that's one. Uh, I go, so for example, there is a restaurant with beautiful views. It's called La Cascada there in Pelican Eyes. Google it, you'll find it's on the hill and it, you look at the Bay of San Juan del Sur and it's run by a German chef and he cooks, I mean, delicious food. Uh, you know, he does schnitzel. He, he does a lot of differences. So there, you know, uh, you can eat anywhere from eight to $14 a plate, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then you get your drinks and the drinks are, I'm not going to say a little bit higher. It's because, you know, you've got to ma make margins, right? But for two people, a good meal, uh, I usually would tip including, um, I pay around 50 bucks, which is for me, it's a very good meal. It's very expensive compared to what is considered here. Now, yesterday sure. I had a that, breakfast. That's, that's La Cascada. La Cascada, right. La Cascada, okay. Yeah. So yesterday I had breakfast in Granada, um, omelet with bacon, uh, full veggies, a uh, cup of coffee, one shot of espresso rum. I had to have that to clean my sinuses, you know, I had to clean that out <laughs> and, uh, and just then had a pop and it cost us, uh, 500 quarts. So less than $15, including tip. Yeah. yeah. But it was, I mean, we're talking solid meal with bread, French bread, excellent food. And we left full. Mm. I can go across the street and have a great steak or a great uh, pork chop uh, for less than 10 bucks. Uh, I mean, you can eat here easily for a, a good lunch, five to seven dollars. Mm -hmm. It is where I always look at just then where it kills us is because we will have three or four beers each. And that's yeah. where the ad comes really quick. So if you don't drink, uh, in the sense you don't drink a lot of beers or you just drink juices. Juices is a little bit on the expensive side, especially when it's very productive here in juice, right? Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I think you can, you know, you can go to Managua. You could spend a heck of a lot more. Uh, a few weeks ago, we had sushi, uh, several plates of sushis at a very nice restaurant uh 30 bucks and uh three beers total mm -hmm. uh you know that is that's not a bad deal yeah do they, my view. do they have like the ma and pa places down there where you can go in and get like sopa de pollo or oh yeah a, a oh, yeah. rose con pollo with plantains yeah. or a little fish for like yeah you know when i was in you know central america and venezuela i always find these little mom and pa places where i pay like you know three four dollars for for a meal central park central park or central park yeah now, bigoron you know you can get bigoron you can get your uh, uh your, your sopas uh you can get all that um uh, but I, again you know i'm look at, it, it's kind of hard to explain it, it's hard, hard to explain to say you know, why don't you go that? Well, because I want to be, 
I know exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for these little cafes, these for me uniqueness, you know, like I was telling this morning to just plan. This is what I like is to go out on a street, sit outside and just have a, a coffee and just have a glass of wine. Can I get it cheaper? Yeah, you can, everything you can get lower cost. But am I getting that environment? Am I getting that that uh, interaction, the, the vibe that I want my, into my mental zone, right? Mm. That is what I'm looking for. Can I get a lower cost? Yes, definitely. Why am I not looking for it? Because I've, I have found the places that I, and I venture to those places I'm looking for. Mm hmm Okay. I was going to ask you... Um some uh additional questions about um like uh just like if you wanted to answer these questions you could answer them in like one word or like a a sentence or or something like that just to give it but i want to ask just for for clarification about the i forgot to ask about the health care um do, do people have to pay monthly into the health care um, some kind of health care plan in Nicaragua to receive um, health care? There, are there plans that they have to pay into or you just uh, pay out of pocket? Pay out of pocket. Pay as you go or you can get what we call insurance plans in different uh, uh, hospitals, but those are not insurance. Those are more discount plans. So you know, you pay in and you get a 20% discount. You gotcha. do this. And uh, so I basically, you know, get sick, pay for it. That's gotcha. So if you, if you had something, if you're just paying per, um, you know, visit, let's say you, like you have a, somebody has a heart attack, a retiree goes down there and they have a um, heart attack. They don't have any insurance. What would that cost them? To, to, you know, they were in the hospital for a week. I see you came out They're They, they make it through. They're okay. I mean, right. you're, you're talking like 150,000 probably in the States, right? In the United no, States not here down here, you probably talk 10 to the 15. So here's a comparable. So when I had my stroke, my total bill, excluding some of the specialists was $150,000. Right. And it was a little bit over $30,000 deductible. And my friend, uh, pretty similar circumstances, also had a stroke, went here. His total out of pocket was less than $10,000. Wow. So you tell me what is better. Okay. Wow. So you were, you were in the States when you had your stroke, you're talking 150 grand. Right. And then yeah. uh, about 10,000 for medical coverage there. Wow. For here. Yeah. 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 For his yeah. bill. So yeah. I've, uh, I hear people going for cancer treatment here. I hear people going for, you know, dental care here. It's, it's significantly lower cost quality wise. Uh, I'm not going to say that our quality is on par to the U S because that would be total BS, but let's put it this way. The care that you receive, the, uh, the quality, quality of that care, the interaction with the doctor is so much better here than back in the States. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because here the, the doctor truly interacts with his patient in the States. Uh, we are just a freaking number. They walk you first, the nurse, they prick you. And then he, he, she walks in, gives you a two second overview and the nurse comes back and this is what the doctor told you to do. Okay. That really helped. Uh, but here the, the doctor, uh, the caregiver gets to know you. Maybe it's because we're expats. I don't know, but they they give us their phone numbers. We interact with them. We we actually know what's going on with our body. You know, dental care. You know, I'm a was. Uh, I told that to the doctor, and the doctor goes, "Don't worry about it." You know, and he started working. And I said, uh, "I want a Novocaine." He said, "Don't worry, you'll be okay." And I'm done. No Novocaine. I go, what the frick just happened? No pain. <laughs> yes, I sweated like bullets. I mean, because of the, you know, you, you're scared. You hear the drill and all this crap. But I'm going, what the hell happened here? And uh, yeah, so they, they, they spend the time that you want 
with you. It's not like rush, rush, rush. I got uh, 20 patients in the back uh, waiting for me. It's all planned. Can it be better? Oh, yeah. It could be a nicer office. It could be uh, better quality chairs. It could be better air conditioning. But that's not what I'm looking for. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, thanks for clarifying that, man. I appreciate it. So the um, here's the here's the first question. What is the what is the greatest thing? Just that, what is the greatest thing about living in Nicaragua that you found? The greatest thing is that I have been able, my wife and I have been able to find ourselves and to reacquaint ourselves with not only between ourselves, but our environment to, to enjoy, you know, it's not ever uh, always perfect, but to enjoy life, you know, and, and not be so darn stressed, you know, where you're pulling your hair out. And as you can see, she cut my hair, so I don't have much to pull right now. Yeah, it looks good, man. Yeah, so how do, how, do you de- how do you describe the, the Nicaraguan people? Loving, caring, um, at times cold. You know, you're gonna, you have to kind of break that barrier. Uh, but uh, we were talking about this morning that at times they don't say much thank you, but I think it's bo- also a cultural thing. And, uh, but overall, smiling, caring, families, loving. Uh, they love to party for sure. Uh, who doesn't? And uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what I would I put it, you know, loving, caring, family, uh, religious uh, people. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. What, what do you, what did you find is the, the most um, strangest thing that when you first moved to Nicaragua, you're like, what, this is different. This is very unique, very, it's strange or unique. Is there anything that stuck out for you that you said, wow, this is quite different than everywhere else? I'm going to flip it in a different sense where the thing that frustrates me the most and truly frustrates me the most is the neglect of the animals that to me, uh, hurts the purse, you know, your strengths, your, your emotional strengths. So for example, uh, we have uh, trays of food uh, at our office for the dogs and we get a lot of dogs, which we crack up because there's one that kind of goes around the community, goes like, okay, let's go. It's, uh, it's almost nine o'clock. They should be there or they're not there. And they all stand in line, you know, ready for their dog food. Uh, so it's the treatment of animals is the one that probably pulls my purse string the most, my emotional strings, um, which if you go to the north, you won't see as much as in the south. And uh, it's a pity. And I know a lot of expats uh, uh, feel the same way. And there's, we all do our, our, our what we can to, to correct uh, when we can. But yeah, that yeah. is the one uh, that's the most. Yeah. Okay. And um, the last question I have is how, is, how has Nicaragua changed you? Huh, that's a damn uh, <laughs> well you've been there one. for quite a while that's yeah set, uh we're going seven um uh, persona eh, not so much i think it's it's this daily thing that we do right it's i'm starting to you know, I, I'm, I'm going to be 67 very soon. And I'm starting to go like, wow, you know, look where, what I got. Wow, look what we did. We did it. And, uh, you know, somebody asked me a few months ago, uh, would you go back? And I said, hell, effing no way would I ever go back. I, I just, it's like, you know, Paul, why did you never go back to the Netherlands and live there? my brain is not wired anymore being a European or Dutch guy. Uh, so this country has changed us for the better to make us better human beings. If that's what you can call it, 
we participate more than we did in the US in things like uh, helping our elders, uh, helping our helpers, helping extended family members, and they're come and help us. I mean, that is the beauty. That is where I have seen a lot of change where they're helping us when they have so little. And that is unimaginable. I mean, just imagine uh, where, you know, they're, they're doing things where they didn't even know you, but they hear that you're in need and you go, holy cow. To me, that is, that's a beautiful, you know? It is. It is, man. I, it sounds yeah. like you, you really, you know, you found a beautiful community to live in. Yeah. To be a part yeah, of. Did. And yeah. uh, that's, that's just, um, there's nothing better. Is there anything else you, you'd like to add or share for the viewers that they, they um, you know, might be curious about Nicaragua? Anything uh, come Just to mind? Just keep an open mind. Keep an open mind. Don't, don't, uh, my biggest thing is don't fall for the inclusive communities, meaning don't go to an expat community because you think that is where safety is. There's no such thing as safe. The expat community gets more robbed than my type of community here okay why mm. the more expats together the more wealth together the more <laughs> makes sense think sure. it through think it through sure what i'm saying is if you really enjoy or what you heard is i would say go find your place find find you find what you are looking for not what everybody's talking about oh go to this area because you can go surf you do this or this what is it that what is the lifestyle you're looking for so every time i talk to somebody i said what is the lifestyle what is it that you're looking for and the funny part is people don't know what they're looking for they can't sit down and really explain this is what i want to do i want to do something that you do but the, you're not talking about what you want to do. You know, tell me what you want to do on a day to day. Uh, from the time that you wake up, what is it that you do? You want to do a nice cup of coffee, sit outside for an hour. That's what we do. That's what we want to do. You see what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's you got to rethink inside yourself, take all the garbage out, all this, you know, uh, clothes with logos and stuff like that and say, what is it that I want? and then we start working towards that yeah yeah and we believe that we have found the heaven on earth here that's just me yeah that's great well paul damon thank you so much Thanks, for for, for being a man. part of this this podcast thank you for sharing your life your story and your experience and tips on living around nicaragua um i truly appreciate it man and i'm glad you're feeling better you look great thanks man Hey, thanks, man. Thanks. I appreciate the opportunity. Wish you well and stay connected. And uh, if you ever want to come down here, I got space, man. Oh, I'd love to. I'll show, you, to I'll show you why this is a heck of a lot better than D.C. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay, man. Take Have care. a great day, okay. man. Okay. Likewise. Bye-bye.